What is your evolutionary opinion about toothpaste? Are there toxins and trade-offs? What did our ancestors do without it? <laughs> that is a great question. Yeah. I love this. That's a good um, question. Yeah. Uh, I have often thought that toothpaste is a, a bit like lip balm, which is to say, once you start using it, you become convinced and maybe even come to kind of need it because now uh, your lips or your mouth, depending, aren't doing quite as much of the things as they would be doing otherwise. And of course, there are more extreme examples like, you know, taking exogenous hormones, right, or melatonin or, you know, in anything that you might put into or on your body um, that replaces a function that your body might have other already had may signal to your body, okay, we already got enough of that, so we're not going to produce as much now going forward, even if you stopped, so now you can't stop, and so now you're just sort of stuck with the thing. Um, certainly, you know, brushing your teeth uh, is, is a different question from what's going on with toothpaste. So toothpaste has, how, how, ma how many roles do we think we are told, and it's been a long time since I've seen any toothpaste advertising, but, it, you know, it's like freshening. It's fluoride. What else? I mean, some of them are claiming to be whitening at this oh, point. Oh, it's abrasive. That's the key thing about a dentifrice. Yeah, although a brush is the biggest abrasive. So why, mm. why would you need to add a thing for the uh, a, a, a abrasion Because piece? the hardness of the brush is insufficient to do the job. It seems to me like that's actually, that, that runs counter to what you should want. You're, it seems like you're in a wear through your enamel if you're using toothpaste as an well, abrasive. Well, let's agree. I mean, in most modern toothpaste taste is very smooth. Uh, not, not at fine enough nope. scale. Sandy? Yeah. That's Zach. Oh, Zach. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> no, it's not that smooth when you get Edelman. He was about to say it anyway. So here's the thing. Obviously, there's something weird about toothpaste in the sense that uh, the ancients didn't have it mm. and we think we need it. Mm. Now, if you were going to make a defense of the need, you would say, well, we live longer and as with other uh, creatures whose teeth, uh, who, whose teeth have been scaled to the life length who are now outliving their teeth, like elephants in the zoo, who run out of teeth, their teeth are basically on a conveyor belt and they have a fixed number unlike sharks and they run out of teeth. It, one of the things that is true is that our teeth have to last longer than our ancestors' teeth did because our average lives are so much longer. So it could be that we are becoming extra careful about decay processes that um, our ancestors had to worry less about. It could be that the novel diet is creating hazards to our teeth that didn't exist for ancestors. It's certainly true uh, that uh, the Weston Price and Mike Mew of the matter is that we have done, we have arbitrarily compromised ourselves so that things like malocclusion result in extra wear on some teeth and no wear on other teeth. So you could be compensating for this sort of thing. And there is some interesting questions around the freshness thing. I strongly suspect is the result of the fact that we are not any longer part of a population where we're all eating the same thing and all uh, have the same mouth flora and all of that, mm -hmm. which I suspect would yeah. eliminate the uh, the bad smells that often occur when somebody's eaten something different and it's being digested by a different bacteria than you have, and it results in byproducts that are offensive and all of that. So yeah, but I'm still I'm not compelled. I don't I don't know the history of toothpaste, and I wouldn't be shocked if it turns out to have been uh, an entirely corporate move. Right, yeah. with, with no basis in uh, in research into its its benefit, because it it seems to me that like a saline rinse and a brush with no toothpaste on it at all. Like I, if if you told me I had to go for six months, travel somewhere, and I had to you know either not have, you know, usually I wear contact lenses. I don't on on camera, but you know if I had to go without saline solution or toothpaste or like I don't know, I love this like this Faro. Um, 
uh, lard based skin moisturizer, which I do think like skin moisturizer too is one of these things. Like obviously people didn't have it before, but like if I had to choose one of those three things to go without, obviously it'd be toothpaste. Yeah. Now if you told me I couldn't have a toothbrush, that's huge. Like that would, and you know, I also like floss and you know, water flossers and there's lots of things sort of in that territory that I really like and use daily. But I actually find that toothpaste is by far the least valuable of the tooth care products for me among the things that I use and, and care about. And it strikes me like really it's the freshness thing. Like you wake up in the morning and you want to not smell yourself and wonder if you smell, um, after a night of sleeping with, I think you're right, you know, in a, in a community where not everyone is eating the same thing and therefore we don't share the same uh, mouth flora and fauna. Uh, but in terms of sort of abrasiveness and getting stuff out of your teeth, um, I mean, especially if we're talking about having modern tech, a toothbrush without toothpaste, floss and a water flosser, uh, and you're good. Yep. Um, I am, as you know, also not a tooth toothpaste historian. Um, Wait. I feel like it's all been a lie. <laughs> no, no, I told you this at first. You may not have believed me. You may I have thought like I was I feel like you kidding. let me continue to think that that was true. At worst, it is a sin of omission. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to think about this. <laughs> I am no toothpaste historian. Okay. I agree with you that this is likely. I mean, in one regard, um, the fluoride itself uh, anyone who digs right. into this discovers that fluoride is a um, industrial byproduct. It is an industrial byproduct, and it is anything but clear. A, there's a question about which which fluoride salt actually there's any data at all to suggest it's good for you. B, mm -hmm. there's downsides to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But C, the fluoride salt that gets put into toothpaste is not the right one. It's certainly true for fluoridated water. I don't remember what the answer is on toothpaste. Oh, okay, okay, good. But yep. in any case. Um, the, I've always wondered if, A, we're interrupting a natural process. It is interesting that the stuff that accumulates on your teeth, and I forget which one is tartar and which one's plaque. Plaque must be the hard stuff, right? I think so, yeah. Um, interesting that it is roughly tooth colored, right? And there's mm -hmm. a question about what, if you allowed your mouth to come to equilibrium, mm -hmm. would you actually be worse off? Mm -hmm. Or is dentistry doing what orthodontics has done and, you know, creating its own yeah. needs, six, right? Every six months, definitely twice a year, you need to get all that stuff taken off your teeth. Really? Every yep. six months, you say? Every How six do you months. arrive at that number? Yeah, well. Oh. Um, so anyway, there there is a, a deep question here. And, uh, you know, okay, you're taking an abrasive to teeth. Hopefully it's been fine-tuned so that, you know, a softer substance can't damage a harder substance. So you would have to calibrate exactly what substance it was so that you were taking off the plaque and tartar and not taking off any enamel at all. Which and maybe wouldn't it at least put a risk of, like, if you've got... If you've got a tiny little hole in your enamel, if you've got a tiny little cavity, wouldn't the abrasive inherently work to make it bigger? Well, if it is not as hard as the tooth enamel, then I think not. Um, no, but if there's already a little hole and then some abrasive gets underneath into like the dentin or whatever it is. Well, but it's, you know, it's a little bit like, um, you know, those Scotch-Brite uh, pads and the sponges that have it. Mm -hmm. There's like different grades and there's certain stuff that you can't do with, you know, the, the blue one that you can do with the green one. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there is a, there is a basic yeah. hardness or thing. Or just different grits on sandpaper. Yep. Well, different grits is about size. Um, the hardness is the key the question. The Scotch-Brite thing is a, is a hardness of material? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Okay. Um, and so, anyway, don't know the answer to the question. I do suspect that there is some face palm at the end of dentistry where we understand that much of the interfering we did wasn't really in our interests. Obviously, there's a certain amount of interfering that we do that is about things like living longer and your teeth having to last longer than they were built for and that sort of thing. Um, but but by and large, yes, I suspect... Oh, I, I wanted to point this out. I believe there is a marvelous piece with uh, Richard Feynman in which About teeth? He, yeah, which he points out that the world is full of people engaging in this behavior a couple times a day and that there's no evidence whatsoever that it's good for you, if I recall the piece correctly. Um, 
And uh, anyway, I don't yep. know if that's still true. Um, I assume it was true when he said it, and I believe I have remembered it correctly. Um, but yes, there's no question that this is a significant intervention, that it could be a compensation for novelty stuff, which would be the best defense for it, or it could be that this is um, a cultivated need mm -hmm. uh, that is about somebody else's economic well-being and, and those sorts of things. And uh, anyway, it would certainly be worth knowing.